In this IOB podcast, we're sitting down with A. Weber's Andrew Prawl. This is the IOB podcast. I'm your host, Mike, and it's my goal to make your podcast the best. Thank you for listening to another IOB podcast episode. My name is Mike A. Weber. Mm, they're about marketing. Oh, au contraire, mon frère. They're your key to directly building relationships with your listeners. Andrew Prawl, one of A. Weber's product managers on the content creation team. His job is to make the life of a content creator, that's you and me, easy. Andrew's not only on the AWeber team, he uses the AWeber product. So we're going to get a great blend of blogging, podcasting, and emailing in this podcast. And if you don't think those three are intertwined, think again. Without any further ado, let's welcome AWeber's Andrew Prawl. I'm really happy to have Andrew Prawl here with us from AWeber. Andrew, welcome to the podcast. Thank you. So, Andrew, you know, podcasters, we podcast. Why in, on earth should we get email addresses from our listeners? Can you maybe give us a, a reason why? Yeah, because that's a direct connection between you and the audience. You don't have to worry about any algorithms. You don't have to worry about um, a company changing the way they do things. So you have a direct connection, which is why it's so important to get that email address. For a lot of podcasters, a lot of the interaction, especially in the beginning, is simply through a rating. And you might see a name, you might see a comment, oh, it's a good show, or you might see a, a five stars, God forbid, only one star. Uh, but this actually gives you a chance to actually interact with your uh, listeners. But not only that, I mean, you can anybody can kind of score an email by saying, send me an email. But using a system like AWeber is nice because not only do we get their email, but that email is saved and stored in your system, right? Yep, that's that's correct. And and you did bring up a good point about uh, getting their email address is a good feedback me uh, mechanism because um, you basically build an audience by one person at a time. Um, so if you have that direct that direct connection with the person, then they have a direct connection to you. So they can so they can shoot you an email. And I'm a content creator myself, so a lot of times I get uh, emails from uh, from specific people. And when I answer back, I form a better connection with them, so that they're more likely to open up all my emails. And in addition, I get feedback in in terms of what um, my subscribers like them are thinking, so I can provide better content in the future. It's really important to build these relationships with the listeners and as a podcaster it's kind of one way but once you open up the whole email window then suddenly it is a two-way experience and you never know who you're going to meet that is so true um like i said um, i'm a content creator uh so my my uh my newsletter is basically the busy traveler.com i'm not a, a shameless plug um but uh <laughs> but so like a lot of times i get feedback from people that I wouldn't necessarily think about. So for, like, for example, when I first started, I talked about all the major sites to see in a certain city, maybe like Seattle or like uh, um, Chicago. But then when I started to get emails, everyone knew what those main sites to see. Like if you're going to Seattle, you're going to see the space, you know, so they're kind of more interested in seeing like some of the quirky things. So for example, so for, she for Chicago, I, I quoted a speakeasy magic show that looked like a laundromat. So, so now people are interested in, in checking that out. And that really increased my, my open rates. So now they're about 55 to 60%. My goodness, that's a huge percentage. If, if anybody gets over, my understanding, basically, if you send out, let's say you send out a, a newsletter to 100 people, if 20 people open, that's actually not too bad. Is that correct? Uh, that yeah, that's that's correct. And the 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 so I'm just starting out. So it's it's only been like a month or so. But my 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 main goal is to provide value, and I think that's what content creators should focus on: providing value. Um, because if you do that, then um, people are more likely to open it. They're more likely to to look for your emails. Um, when passing uh, by by people that I know our subscribers are like, hey, yeah, your 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 emails are sent out every uh, Sunday or Monday. I'm like, yeah, that's true. So they're starting to look for it, and 
eventually you can capture some of that, that, that value in terms of sales if you keep, if you keep giving. A lot of times when, when, when people think email marketing, they, they think about what am I going to get? You know, I want people just to give me money. But uh, there, there, there are tons of things out there that we know we should be doing or we know we should be looking at, right, that we're not. So providing value is a bare minimum. That's great. So as the podcast, let's, I'm going to switch it back into podcasting. You know, we talk a lot about things, but there's no visual. And sometimes there could be a visual if you're also putting on YouTube, but generally there's no visual. So it's a great place to actually add a photograph in an email uh, to get people to really identify. It's a great place to add your photo uh, into the email so people can really feel who you are and get it, and get an idea of who you are. And do you do that with your emails? Are you sending out pictures and stuff like that too, or like Google links and things like that? Uh, yes, yes. And and actually, I've gotten to photography from from the busy traveler. So I'm starting to study how photographers compose images, and that allows me to to, to take better images. So that's another way of me providing more more value. I'm giving. Uh, my subscribers something great to to look at so not only is is this traveling a passion of yours but you're actually enhancing your travel experiences because of your email and the demands of your listener of your readers yes yes definitely so a weber going back into a weber now there's a lot of companies out there and i've tried a couple uh, my wife has tried one uh, most recently we did the and i'm going to say the name wrong and i Kind of a kind of apologize, but I don't really like them. The monkey one, uh, uh, yeah, something like that. <laughs> something like that, right? <laughs> I can't remember exactly what the name is. I really can't. But uh, a formatting was a pain in the butt with that. I mean, it was nice. The colors seemed nice, but uh, formatting wasn't that easy. And I convinced my wife, well, you should come over to a web. Or I've been using you guys for, geez, I think seven years, and the formatting is so much easier. Can you tell us how easy is it? Because, you know, if you're using Microsoft Word, it's pretty straightforward. But what about AWeber? Do I have to learn a whole new kind of software uh, end to get my my newsletter to look nice? No. So uh, so all the formatting is super uh, easy and there's a lot of inline uh, editing. So some of uh, our uh, competition, right, if you're making a change on the canvas, you actually have to type the text in another screen which I don't think is the best experience because if I'm working on the, if I'm working on the canvas, I want to be able to work completely on the canvas. Um, it's, I think it's a clunky experience if I have to look at another screen in order to update the text. And when you say the canvas, it's the actual editing portion of the AWeber window, correct? That's, that's correct. So, so the canvas is what the subscriber is going to see when, when they get that email. The email letter itself, i.e. canvas. Okay, great. Because when I when you say Canvas, people might get confused with the the free art program that where people can uh, manipulate images and stuff. Yep, and that's actually another competitive advantage of AWeber. So we have a direct integration with Canva. So uh, so so actually, this is not another plug, but the Busy Traveler logo that was all created in Canva. Um, You're really plugging this. Uh, yeah, it's just have to. You totally know how it is. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. Oh, that's great. So, and by the way, go ahead and, and give us the, the website again so people can check out what your stuff looks like. Yeah, so it's the busytraveler.com. So um, I basically always like traveling, um, but 2020 hit, and I basically had all my travel notes um, from... From, from 2020, Amsterdam, Croatia, Portugal, that's fully planned out. And um, I'm, I'm a product manager by, by uh, profession. So I kind of take those same, those same qualities of building features and making sure that they're built properly. And I kind of use that towards, uh, towards uh, traveling. But to briefly describe the, the, the value, I'm not going to BS people. Um, so, for example, a lot of times when someone goes to, to like, Puerto Rico, they're like, oh, yeah, it's the best time, and they show off. You know, like, you know, like, yeah, um, I'm not going to do that. If I'm not feeling something, I'm going to say that well, that wasn't the best, you know, save your money, save your time. Um, and then then um, I also give tips on how to save flights, you need to save money on flights. So I've been traveling, I think I had eight trips this year so far, I only spent $90 total on all the flights. Everybody, I hope you're listening because right now, uh, what Andrew is doing is he's selling us on this newsletter. So obviously everybody likes to travel. Most people like to travel. They like to go to these different places, but he's 
bringing an edge, kind of an angle that is quite unique, that is really personal and something that you should be doing with your content. As a podcaster, you're, you're producing this audio content quality, uh, constantly, but then again, you can bring it into a newsletter. You can simply reformat a lot of podcasts into a newsletter, add a little bit more spice, add some pictures, add that extra uh, link, the extra links and stuff like that. You don't even have to sell anything. Are you selling anything in your newsletter right now, Andrew? Nope, nope, I'm not. And so which is why the first point, it hits home with me because I haven't figured out how to monetize this, but that's still just not stopping me from building my audience. So eventually when my audience is large enough and I get enough feedback, then I, you know, hopefully we'll be able to monetize it. And whether or not that's a goal, it's not important. It's about just reaching out to your listener, to your reader and having that personal relationship. There's a guy named Edward and a, a lady named Madison, and they tweeted us and they said, how do I get people to sign up? My content is unique. Only I produce this type of content. Uh, nobody's signed up. What can I do? Uh, do you have any advice on how I can get people to sign up? Uh, yeah. So, so one thing is to, so social media is definitely a, a must. So I'm using social media, right? So a, another part of it is to make it entertaining. So, so, so for example, I was in San Diego, um, um, last, last weekend and I went to a karaoke bar, right? And the karaoke, the people performing, they weren't the best karaoke singer. So I basically tweeted something saying that, yeah, I'm at the, I'm at a karaoke bar and the talent here is, is something, you know, incoming video. Right. So once I shared that uh, Facebook story, right. And this, this group of people, they, they destroyed kiss from a rose, you know, by, by seal. I, I, I love that song, but it was, it was horrible, but, but you know what, a lot of people opened up that message. And so if I keep having, entertaining type content like this while still giving nuggets of value, um, I can definitely get more people to sign up because you have more, more people have um, signed up to my, to my um, email list, just, just from like that event alone. So that's, that's my answer. This is really yeah. good. So, so once again, obviously you want to produce your quality content. You want to give your nuggets of information. You want to give your advice, but then again, you want to go on that personal level and add something from your life, something interesting that you've seen or perhaps read, or in your case, you were lucky enough to witness. Is that right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's correct because a lot of times, for providing value, it can be too information heavy and it can it can be too overwhelming. So, for example, if I talk about how to, if I talk about how I transferred my points to different airline alliances in order to only pay ninety dollars, that is way too much. And even though someone wants to you know, learn about that. It's too much at once. So you have to kind of be able to split up the value and still make it fun to fun and easy to digest. By the way, for guys out there who do go to a karaoke, although Bon Jovi music sounds good and doesn't seem that difficult, I highly recommend you never sing it. <laughs> <laughs> I've never tried Seal, but I have tried Bon Jovi and I realized that was a mistake. Yeah, there was, there's, <laughs> yeah, definitely. And there was this one guy that he totally had the right idea because, uh, so I can't sing at all, but he totally sung a song at the karaoke bar and then he just walked out. So <laughs> like, <laughs> that's the way to <laughs> Elvis has left the building. <laughs> yep. So this is a great idea for content, but still, you know, people sign up for newsletters all the time. You get so much, uh, the, I've got, I have so many email accounts and, and I'm surprised every email account has these newsletters rolling in that I forgot that I even signed up for. How do you get people to open the emails? I mean, is there a magic thing that you can do? Is, are there words that you can put in your uh, title? Are there, can we use emojis, capital letters, any, I, any good advice there? Yeah, so uh, a quick tactical thing is I like adding emojis into my subject line, just so if, if, they're, if they're viewing a whole bunch of emails, they can see my emojis. So for example, so for like Phoenix, right? Tips on how to travel with Phoenix, I'll do something like a cactus and the sun. And if, if I'm talking about something random, I'll put like a dice. It's kind of cheesy, but it does work. And feedback from the subscribers say that they do like the emoticons. Okay, so this is important because uh, I've heard some people say, don't use emoticons, don't use them. And on the other hand, you are using them 
and you're actually getting positive feedback from it. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, and the thing is, right? The so I think the the main thing about that is to be authentic. And I think once people know that you're authentic and you're speaking from your heart, they'll be more willing to open that. So if that involves um, um, emoticons or casual language, um, that's that's the source that you'd be coming from. I know that A Weber has what they call what they call split testing, and I've actually, even though I've been with you guys for years, I've never tried it. So with split testing, basically my understanding is I can send out the same content, but I can use different titles. So for example, one title could be uh, emoji free and the second title could have emojis and then I could actually see the click rates. Is that right? Is that about right? Yep, that's that's exactly correct. Yep, so even if you're not sure which method is the best, you can use our split testing engine to to set up different um, experiments to see which one's more effective. And then in the future, you can you can launch a more successful one. That is really uh, important because sometimes you're going to really be surprised at what works and what doesn't work. Sometimes you're going to think you've got the, oh, this is, this is the best title in the world and nobody clicks on it. And then the next time you send something out, it's like, oh man, I really wish I had worked more on that title and everybody clicks on it. It's, it's kind of crazy, isn't it? Yeah. It's great. And that, and that is even more reason why that getting that email address is so important. Having that direct connection, even if you had nothing to sell, so like, for example, let's just say if you, you did have something to sell, right? But you don't have that, that direct connection. So you spent a whole bunch of time a whole, uh, and a whole bunch of money for something that your audience may not want, right? And so you just, it's a waste right there. But if you have a direct connection, um, it's a lot easier to have a more successful product that you can sell and be profitable. Once again, for the podcasters out there, let's say you're thinking of doing a series on one particular subject, and this is this is number one, and it's going to be a five-part series. But if you get this actual email address and people are giving you feedback, you might find out that nobody really cares about this series. So you can kind of nip it in the bud and maybe do one or two and then move on to something else. This is fantastic advice. Now, another issue when you send out emails to whether it's 20 people or 20,000 people, you don't want to end up in a spam folder. How can we avoid that? Yeah. So, uh, so, so one thing is to have good open rates. Um, and also a professional email address helps, you know, if it's coming from, um, from, you know, uh, John Doe at gmail.com, you know, um, that's probably going to get, get marked as spam. And then the subscribers seeing that, right. They're going to think that this is not really an official, you know, business because they don't even have a professional email address, which it's it's super easy and super cheap to get. OK, so and I actually still use a Gmail address. Now, I, I have my own uh, website, too. So that's something I should switch over. Yeah, yes, yes. But if it's working for you, um, there's there's many different ways up the mountain. So if that's working for you, then, yeah. So how easy is it to change your email address because I'm already in there and, and this is kind of a personal question. So what do I need to do basically to go in there and change that uh, sent from email address? Uh, oh yeah. So um, you can, you can basically uh, buy it from like a, a domain provider. Right. Um, and then you can just go for a Weber, like the, the uh, account setting section, and then you can just change your, your email address. Of course, there's some verification steps. That, that you would have to do, but it's super easy. And then once you get it set up, you don't have to worry about it. So even for a guy who's actually not that tech savvy, it should be pretty simple. Oh, it is very simple. And then that's, uh, I think that's one of the good things about AWeber is that we're customer focused. And I, I really mean this because we go before launching new features, we meet with customers and prospects and we show them wireframes and we see how they respond. And depending on how they respond, right, we, we make changes. Sometimes we throw out our designs and start from, from scratch. Um, so, so that when a feature does come out, it, it, it's very easy and it's intuitive. What about your help system? How is that set up? So I sign up. I don't know what the heck I'm doing. Oh, it's, it's great. Uh, so, yeah, it's, it's the best in the industry. 24-7 uh, support. You can, you can, you can contact uh, a Weber support at any time, and they're super helpful super knowledgeable uh, individuals. And we also do free migrations too. I can't, I can, so honestly, I shouldn't be saying this, but sometimes if I have a question, I reach out to a Weber support 
and they and they they, they help me. <laughs> That's <laughs> great. So if, so if somebody's using another provider, and let's say you've got you know three hundred subscribers or three thousand or whatever it is, you guys can help them keep all of those email addresses. They don't have to lose anybody, and they can integrate right into Aweber. Is that right? Correct. Correct. And it's all in house, so you're not you're not talking to a random call center overseas. You know, these these are people that also are are content creators, so they understand the system, they understand the industry, they understand the product, um, and and they're super helpful. Which is why it's perfect talking to you because not only are you obviously uh, working with a Weber, but you are a content provider and you're using the stuff, and that's <laughs> okay. So, Andrew, do you got to get a podcast going? Uh, sure, I would like to. It's it's a lot of work being content creator. So I respect everyone's hustle. Well, you know what? There's something called repurposing. You can just take your uh, newsletter and basically make an audio to it and boom, you're done. Definitely. Yeah, I, I, I could do that. I would have to look into, and I think these are just excuses now. Uh, yes, yeah, so I guess I would have to look into audio quality and all those other stuff and podcast editing, which I hear is a lot. So, oh, it's not bad at all. It's not, now you need to sign up for our our newsletter, IOB, the intro outro bed.com. <laughs> Go there and sign up. Definitely. I, I, I will actually. And uh, I definitely like signing up to a lot of uh, the uh, uh, AWeber customers and their newsletters just so I can see how they use it and see. And yeah, it's it's great being able to connect. With, with our customers. So I'll definitely sign up. Oh, and you know what? We should talk about price. Aweber is free. Uh, yeah, so up to 500 subscribers. And uh, so there's like a cap of 3,000 emails a month. So um, at, at that point, though, you have a pretty substantial audience and you're, you're not a brand new content creator. You basically have a, you know, a, a weld oil machine. So at that point... It's nominal. It's not that no, much. It's not, no, it's only $20, not 1999. So. And and so you can still sell things on the free plan. So the Aweber e-commerce widget is already available on the free plan. So uh, under 500 subs, like you can still make money off of that. So and you could actually make a lot of money depending on what you're doing. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. Especially if you're selling like uh, mastermind courses, you can make thousands of dollars a pop. Oh, see, now I got to start another newsletter. What kind of mastermind <laughs> can I do? <laughs> It's basically how do you uh, set up uh, uh, how do you, the equipment and software you need to get for podcasting. Boom. I think I would sign up for that. Yeah, Boom. There you go. It's done. I'm going to do that. <laughs> Thank you so much, Andrew. Thanks to A. Weber and thanks to Andrew Prawl. And I'll put your links uh, in the newsletter and in the, in the uh, content section here for the podcast. Thank you so much. Right, thanks, Mike. Take care. You know, one thing nice about the companies and individuals that we interview here on the IOB podcast, they do the same thing we do. Now, granted, Andrew isn't podcasting yet. I'm working on that. But he's just like us. He wants that direct contact with his direct community. And other than exchanging phone numbers, no thanks, email, email is perfect, right? It's powerful, personal, and it's free. Yeah. Try AWeber for free, up to 500 subscribers for free. And you get all the bells and whistles that come along with a premium membership, too. And of course, in our links, uh, in the show notes, in our email, uh, we have an affiliate link, and we'd love it if you use that. Thank you very much. Also, AWeber has a great social media presence. If you have any questions, Twitter, it's at AWeber. A-W-E-B-E-R, or just visit their website, aweber.com, and they have live chat. Uh, even if you're not a paying customer, they have live chat. Uh, of course, they have email, too. And Andrew, Andrew's on Twitter, at Andrew Prawl. I'll spell that, A-N-D-R-E-W-P-R-A-W-L, at Andrew Prawl. And get his newsletter, Sign up for it, The Busy Traveler. Now that COVID, uh, you know, finally seems to be getting better, more of us will be on the road. So go to thebusytraveler.com, thebusytraveler.com. In our next podcast, Focus Right will join us. Be sure to subscribe to our podcast wherever you listen to us. Get our newsletter and follow us on social media. My email address is Mike at introoutrobed.com that's the IOB right introoutrobed.com get our IOB newsletter at introbed.com introoutrobed.com 
Music Maestro TJ is very active on Twitter. That's twitter.com slash intro outro bed. And our offer stands. Submit your podcast to us for a format critique. If we choose you, TJ will make a free custom made intro just for you and your show. We're on iTunes and pretty much everywhere else you can find a podcast. We would sincerely appreciate a rating and a comment. Five stars is where it's at. Tell your friends. Thanks so much. My name is Mike, and I'll talk to you next time. Bye-bye.